Hi guys, welcome back. So, I finished all my allied placement games. Um, that was a quick look. I ended up the placement games on three losses, two wins, which is not great. Um, I had one game to go, and it was looking fairly good. So I started another one, and then lost that game before I finished the, the fifth one. <laughs> so actually, the final count was three losses and two wins, which is kind of a shame. I should have waited until the other game had concluded. <laughs> Probably would have got three and two, but yeah, three losses and two um, two wins. So uh, I got put into bronze, and I've had a few wins since then, so we're pushing back up to, to silver. So we're going to start the grind back to back to gold, and then hopefully we'll finish up in platinum at some point this season. That's that's the that's the end goal for my allied uh, my allied play this, this season, so hopefully I can get there. I'll be honest as well, just as a quick shout-out for... Um, uh, the TTG guy, I can't remember if I mentioned him in a video before, um, since, I've, since I've come back to the game. Um, but I've been watching a lot of his content on YouTube, uh, and he's got some really good stuff. And he's also a very high level player, he's like upper platinum for both allies and axis. So if you want someone that's you know, really pretty much at the top of the game, then I think he's, there's, there's no one better really. Um, he's making content as well. I think Quinton actually, Quinton's another really, he's actually one of the, the very, very top players. Like top five kind of ability um he's also got a youtube channel but I don't, he's not been posting a whole lot so there is there are some useful vis videos in there definitely there's some good stuff on there but um i think the tcg uh videos for me are personally better i prefer his commentary and also his his way of um explaining his thought process i think is really really appealing so it's, it's good to listen to so yeah i'd recommend checking those out quinton's uh, youtube channel and also the ttg guys uh youtube channel i'll leave them in the um i'll leave some links in the descriptions for both of those if you want to have a have a look but yeah so basically there's not really a lot to talk about in terms of my game my uh, my ally games i think it was mainly for me just weak um russian defense which is I'm going to need to work on. Um, there's one game I want to show though. It's one of the wins I had, and I, I went down pretty early in terms of like Russia had a had a rough few rounds. I mean, I managed to come back come back and win it, which was nice. So I think I'll, I'll show a few um, a few of the highlights from that game. So this is round two, um, and Germany left the board in a situation where I could attack uh, all three bordering provinces, so Karelia, Belarusia, and Ukraine, with good odds. Uh, we had enough units to do that. I think it was worth it, you know, trying to kill um, as many frontline infantry as possible because obviously then they're only attacking with tanks, so kill those um, those meat shield units if you've got good odds. So we went for a pretty greedy attack here, but I think it was still viable. Um, went for Karelia in Ukraine. Um, yeah, got absolutely shafted on the rolls in Karelia. It took four hits, which already was a disaster, so I had to pull out of this immediately. Um, so. Terrible dice for Corellia. Not one single hit <laughs> on anything. Um, so Ukraine, again, pretty bad. <laughs> uh, just one hit of all those guys. Second round missed again. Took three hits. So the, these two battles went very poorly for me. Very poorly indeed. Um, again, trading evenly there on that round. Two hits there. Probably should have pulled out at this point. To be fair. Pressed on, <laughs> no hits for anything. So the rolls are so bad, really, really bad. No hits again. Finally get hit with um, the threes down there. So yeah, very, very poor. We lost a lot of troops there, and obviously um, Russia can't afford to lose that kind of amount of infantry and still not get away with it. So we got very quickly surrounded. <laughs> so the mistake that my opponent made two big mistakes though. Um, given how well he did against Russia uh, early on, he then went into navy as germany which i think was a huge mistake um if you've got a great lead against russia which he did um it's better just to go full full infantry and full land units and just try and capitalize on that but instead he went for ground um a naval approach which wasn't the right wasn't the right choice um he did manage to take india though um with some help with his transports in the mediterranean so he managed to pressure india a little bit heavier um he also made the mistake of going for Western United States with Japan. He put um, a complex in Hawaii, which was interesting, <laughs> to try and maximise his pressure, but he never managed to take Western United States because it was too easy to defend. So, yeah, that was, um, I think, two big mistakes. Yeah, I think a, a, a heavier focus on Russia should have won this game a lot quicker, um, but he went for uh, a different different type of approach. So, I noticed on round seven, after some, you know, slowly rebuilding my forces, that we could take Berlin. 
uh, with a one-two punch from UK and US. So we set it up round set at round seven. Um, went for a quick landing in Berlin. The idea here wasn't to take it with the UK, it was just to, just to kill as many units as we can um, to allow the US to uh, to roll in. So not too bad there. All the land units are dead now, which is nice. Unfortunately, didn't get any more hits on the planes, so we lost everything else. But yeah, killed all the land units now, so the the, um, the Americans had a much easier time of uh, taking Berlin. Yeah, so obviously we, we managed to hold on to Russia the entire game, which was fortunate, just because the, the, the pressure land-wise was so minimal from my opponent that we could just stack it with UK fighters and hold it until we obviously uh, managed to mobilise the other powers. So yeah, here we go. US is round seven attack on Berlin. Uh, destroyed all the planes. Some nasty hits on the, on the return fire, but still we had an, <laughs> enough infantry left or land units left to take it without losing any planes and, and trading. So yeah, Berlin falls round seven, which is great for us. Obviously, they had so little land presence by this point, given the fact they went for a really heavy navy navy approach that we, you know, they had so little to recapture it with. Um, so we eventually took it. Um, yeah, and then we we had a big battle near Brazil. Uh, killed a lot of Japanese um, naval units that they stacked there, uh, and they obviously put a complex in Brazil as well. Very strange game this one, very bizarre. <laughs> um, this was like the last sort of stronghold for uh, the Japanese in the uh, yeah in the, in the kind of Europe arena. Um, big stack of bombers in Brazil, which managed to kill off, which was nice. Return fire from the last bomber. No return fire. Good. There we go, so 58 IPC for 3, which is huge. <laughs> and also he stacked uh, Western Canada with a few troops, but by this point, yeah, he lost all momentum. I, I don't think, it, it's so hard to take, I'm doing a video on this current actually, of trying to um, take Western United States with Japan. It's so difficult to do, because the US can deploy 10 units per round um, straight into the territory you're trying to defend. And it's just so tr tricky to hold it and you know capture it and hold it together. It's really really difficult. So we never really lost control of the situation uh, in Western United States, which was good. So he was just wasting his time really in this game going for that, and he should have been really been pushing uh, pushing against Russia as normal. So all the um, Japanese troops on the U.S. land are dead. Given the fact he lost all his planes in Brazil as well, that was a pretty huge moment for for this game. So obviously stack Western United States. He didn't have enough to take it with what he had uh, sitting in season 57. We had our complete fleet now, obviously free to move around the Atlantic, which was nice. Um, the last remnants of the German forces were sitting in season 16, but not, not able to do anything, obviously. No land troops to pick up and uh, very minimal attack power given our fleet in the Atlantic, so we were never in danger, really. But yeah, just it really interesting. I think he had the game in the bag. I think that from the start, that round two with Russia was so brutal that if he just played standard and gone for you know a heavier land approach with Germany, he could have finished Russia off probably in you know round three or four or five, um, depending on what, how I defended. Um, but again, going for navy with the Germany, I think was a huge mistake. As well as going for Western United States with Japan, I think when you have an advantage, you've got to press it and not just let them let them sit alone and do something else. I think you've really got to press your pressure advantages and your opponent's weaknesses. But there we go. Um, round 11 was the final round for this game. Uh, he resigned, obviously. Given the situation, I think it was probably the right move. Um, but yeah, a nice uh, a nice comeback win this one. I think I was quite happy with this one, given how bad it started. Uh, yeah, to come back and win it was cool. So not a total disaster for our placement game. It wasn't great, but still it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> so yeah, we've just got to stop the grind now to get back to... Um, to gold and hopefully platinum at some point but there we go